I got a question for you guys. Are you challenging yourself to make the most interesting shots possible? Now, what I mean by that is a lot of times I see guys when they start doing their storyboards, they give me the default stuff. I want you to give me the goods. I want you to give me the most interesting composition you can possibly think of. All right, people default to profile shots. They flatten things out. They put things dead center in the composition. None of that. I want to challenge you guys and make sure that when you do your work, when you're creating a shot, when you're conceptualizing a composition, that you're doing it and designing it in a way so that when a viewer looks at it, they're impressed. They like it. It's the flow. That's what you want to show these guys, that it's something they haven't seen before. Give it a try. At least challenge yourself to try and do that. It's not that easy. Definitely not that easy. But let me show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. So most people, when they start out, they start you know, let's do the most basic thing, which is drawing a character, right? They'll put the character right in the middle of the frame, okay? And they'll say, that's the dialogue, and then they'll cut to another character. And I, you know, I think that, that to me is a sign that you haven't really thought it through, okay? So what you really need to do is start thinking about how can I, if, if all you have is a character and a close-up, how can you make that close-up interesting? One of the things is, you know, Get close, offset the character, right? So what if we're this close, okay? So you see a nose and here's the mouth, right? There you go, something like that, that's it. You know, maybe the hair even comes in, into, the, into the frame. And guess what? With digital tools, you can adjust this stuff. So I don't like the position, I'll move it here. How about that, right? So you're dealing with negative space, right? And positive space, so positive space, negative space, that kind of thing. That's one way to break up the division of this composition. Okay, how about something else, right? Are you, when you're doing your dialogue stuff, and let's, let's use that same example, are you doing stuff like this? So most people will do, we'll try and fit the whole head in there, and they'll get somebody talking, right? And they do this, it's a profile shot, right? And then, you know, you draw the hair or whatever. But that to me is just the most default composition you could possibly do. <laughs> I wanna challenge you guys to do something a little more interesting. So one thing, just take that, just take that profile shot. What if you just raise the camera up a little bit? What are you gonna get? You're gonna get something that looks a little bit like this. So at least, at the very least, not that I'm saying this is the best solution, but at the very least you get a somewhat down shot of that same, of that same head, okay? So it's a little bit, now the camera is doing something. So right now what you're telling the audience is that you're higher than this character. You're subjectively putting an emotional statement on this guy so that he's actually lower than the viewer. So that actually diminishes his, you know, it's, this is a very subconscious psychological thing, but you want to design this stuff throughout your shots. So that right there, and if you, know, if you draw in the floor plane with a, with a simple grid, then it's obviously an apparent that we're looking down on this guy and that the camera's above him. So that, you know, it puts him in a psychologically inferior position, right? What if you do the opposite? So these are, these are things you need to be thinking about when you're drawing this character. Let's do it from the other side to make it a little more interesting. So what if you get this and, you know, here's the, the eye line. You know, I'm just doing a simplified face, right? Just basic shapes just to get the idea across. This is eyeball, <laughs> okay, ear, right? There it is. We have a slight upshot. Now this is not this crazy dynamic upshot of the character, but it's a slight upshot on this guy. So what does that tell us? He's in a, in a emotionally superior position according to the camera, right? We're using the camera to emphasize the, the importance of this guy, right? It's subtle, I know. But this is more interesting to look at than just a solid, flat, straight on camera, line, camera move, right? Or camera position. Uh, the other thing to think about is a lot of times I get the suspicion 
that people do these profile shots and they do these straight on shots because they don't have a, a solid enough command of your drawing skills in order to draw something a little more interesting. So that three quarter shot should be kind of something that you always have in your back pocket and you always know how to draw. So it should, it should be something like this. I usually start with like uh, a simple head shape. But right here, I'm gonna draw the axis of the, of the head. And look, this, if this is the, the axis of the eyeballs, for example, just draw an ellipse, there you go. You just offset a little bit, you know? And this is not even that perfect. I'm, I'm going pretty fast, right? You know, I'd probably spend a little more time and make this thing a little more accurate if I, would, if I were to do this for real in a, in a storyboard. But there you go, at least he's in a three quarter profile view to the viewer. Now, I don't even like that stuff. Even this to me is not pushed enough. I want this character looking straight at us in the most engaging way possible. Usually, I this to me is kind of the default of what people do in three quarter. I like to do the opposite, where you get something even more engaged. So what does that mean? How about this? If you're gonna do a three quarter, make it a make it almost a frontal view with just a, a slight a slight offset of the character's head so it's not exactly straight on so you get maybe this a little bit of the side of the nose but his eye line is almost almost looking at and here I might actually draw the whole eyeball right so you kind of get the the idea right and but that his his face is almost looking straight at us right Again, I'm just gonna simplify this whole thing. You know, I put more time and expressions and that kind of thing to make it a little more subtle. But how about this, all right? How many times have you defaulted to this? This is your first intention. This is your first pass at stuff, right? Most of the time, it doesn't happen as often as I'd like to see it, <laughs> okay? And again, you can do this, digital tools, oh, I don't like that, I'm moving around. All right, how about this? What if I don't like the, the eyeballs, right? I can go in, let me see, let me get a bigger eraser. What if I don't, I don't like the eye line? I do this a lot, I change the eye line a lot. And I want him looking straight at us. Okay, how about that? That looks to me a little more interesting. Let's take a look at the comparison, right? That compared to this. Okay, that to me is looking and trying to figure out, and I don't even know what the right answer is, but at least I'm trying different ways of showing this character in a close-up. Okay, I challenge you guys to do something similar. When you get an assignment, when you get a script, when somebody's asking you to show a character's emotion, I want you to rack your brain and come up with the most, the highest number of options you can possibly draw. Just little thumbnails, just doodle it out, okay? But decide on something that's unique and interesting and that really describes the story point for the moment and the emotional beat. Think about all of these things as you're doing it. Don't just rush through and give us the default, okay? Keep that in mind the next time you guys are doing your boards.